Uh, yeah. That's what it's all about. Could just sit here and just do that, but it's been time to have a scripture video for a while. We studied 1 Timothy chapter 4 a week ago during our Bible study when we also have Awana at night, and then I spoke about part of that chapter uh, a week and a half ago before Easter, but now for just the little scripture video, there's no place I'd rather be filming than here on this balcony in Gatlinburg uh, on the creek. I'm going to go to chapter 4 of 1 Timothy, these, these two letters that Paul wrote to his protege Timothy, some of the last material he wrote. Some think that the second letter may be the last thing he wrote. I'm going to speak on verses 6 through 16. This is titled in this Bible, the uh, Legacy Standard Bible, the update of the New American Standard, looked at as probably the most accurate translation in English. It's subtitled, A Good Minister's Discipline. And this is not just for someone like me to read a minister, but also for all of us, because we are the priesthood of all believers. So here's the, the text. It says, in pointing out these things to the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being nourished on the words of the faith and of the sound doctrine which you have been following. But refuse godless myths fit only for old women. On the other hand, train yourself for the purpose of godliness. For bodily training is only of little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. It is a trustworthy saying and deserving full acceptance. For it is for this we labor and strive, because we have fixed our hope on the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of believers. Command and teach these things. Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but show yourself as a model to those who believe in word, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Until I come, give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation and teaching. Do not neglect the gift within you, which is given to you through prophetic utterance with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Take pains with these things, be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to all. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things, for as you do this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. And this word, again, is, is for Timothy, but it's for all of us because listen to what it's saying. It's, it's saying to be a, a good servant of Christ Jesus, being nourished on the word of faith and on sound doctrine that he's been following. We're all to, to follow the faith. Hey, Casey, glad to see you're joining us out in the creek. I know that you're not at a creek right now. You're at a workplace, and, and yeah, but just bask in that for a moment says refuse godless myths and I know it says old women and Paul he's salty but we can all be prone to listening to the wrong things in church life about tradition about the way things have always been done how about in fact about godliness he makes the comparison to training for our body and I know that when Harriet and I go to planet fitness and when some of you all do exercise and and lift and do anything you can when you walk or jog or run we're trying to keep our bodies from failing us but at the same time, the, the importance is on training in godliness. Love the sound of these red-winged blackbirds below me here. I just love that sound. And it says we, we labor and strive because our hope is fixed upon Jesus. That's where we're at. And he says command and teach these things. This is not a wishy-washy proclamation. Paul is saying this is what you need to do, you're going to do. Teach these things, command them. Don't let anybody look down on your youthfulness. And I'll say this is not just, again, about being youthful. He's probably 35 years old, Timothy, so it's thought. But it's also about the fact that a lot of us in our church, and maybe yourself even watching, maybe have not been a Christian or a churchgoer your whole life. Don't let that pull you down in the way people might ridicule you or not trust what you're saying just because you're new to the faith, new to the church. We're excited at Brennan because as of uh, Easter Sunday, we have jumped from one man, Ricky Hayden, holding the, the creek for us for baptisms. He's been holding that creek for about six months. So now we're up to seven folks who are going to go in there counting him. So 
the word is being proclaimed and people are responding to it. And it's because of people that are new to the faith that are hearing it and wanting more of that. Paul says, don't neglect the gift given to you. God has blessed Timothy with gifts that he is to, to use. That he's had a prophetic utterance about his life, the laying on of hands. The church has seen what is in Timothy and he's being sent out to teach. He says, take pains with these things, be absorbed in them, and everyone will see it. They'll see your progress. If this is who you are, if this is your life, and in this case, if Paul is saying, Timothy, if this is who you are, this is your life, then let that be your focus throughout your existence. It says, pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things, for as you do this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. He is to stand firm, to persevere, because God will do the sanctifying work. I know it says here, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. God's doing that saving. But Timothy is being the hands and feet of Christ as can all of us who believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. God will use us as his instruments. He does the saving, no one else does, but he will do it. And I, to basically say, command and teach this to our flock at Drennan Christian Church that's growing all the time, that if we focus on this, if we focus on him, if we lift our hands in prayer and ask God, what are you having us to do then our church will grow and it's not about drennan it's about the kingdom of god growing i know as for me and my house we will serve the lord and i believe that our house is a temporary one here because god is calling us home very very soon i believe that this this sky above us will be called into it when jesus calls the dead in christ first and then calls those who believe right after it. and most of us believe these times are are near People are getting up in arms about the eclipse that'll be a, uh, a week from yesterday. It's six days away now. Is that a sign? There's lots of signs out there right now. If it wakes people up and has people thinking of this book and thinking of the man, God, who wrote it, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father in heaven, the Holy Spirit's uh, imparted wisdom through these words, then praise God, let it be. We're gonna get back to our walking through town. We're blessed right now with an 80 degree day. I know back home it has been thunderstorms and all sorts of things happening. Ours will come here later tonight and tomorrow. But right now we're gonna get out and experience Gatlinburg. We'll see you all soon when we get home. And good luck tonight. Be blessed with the volleyball team playing in the tournament. Bye-bye.